Uh, my name is John Sullivan. Um, I'm substituting in for Christoph Pietrzek, uh, who couldn't make it as the session chair. Uh, so I'm just going to give brief introductions and uh, let the speakers have their time. Uh, so first up is uh, Theo Teo, uh, presenting a technique for mixed reality remote collaboration using 360 panoramas. Uh, and I'll go ahead and let him talk. Thank you. Thank you, John, for the introductions. So hi, everyone. Thanks for joining with me today, and I hope you have enjoyed your lunch breaks. So for today, I'm going to share with my panel topics that talks about the techniques that we use to mixing the 360 panoramas and the 3D reconstructions to achieve a mixed reality remote collaborations. So as the advancements of the technology, mixed reality, augmented reality, and virtual reality has been severely making some contributions to remote collaborations, especially, for example, a remote user or the remote expert worker from the other places will be able to use visual cues like hand gestures, annotation drawing, or even pointing to make non-verbal communication cues to the local user. But sometimes, or for most of the cases, in realistic cases, when we talk about remote collaborations, being in the remote places, understanding the contextual information or the environment of the local user can be somewhat challenging for us to do. So for this case, there are actually two mainstream methods or having like kind of like common method that have been used so far that people use for sharing the environments to achieve a remote collaboration, which is what I would call 360 cameras and the 3D reconstructions, or we could just call it 360 remote collaborations and 3D remote collaborations. So since you might know that why we have been talking about 360 or 3D in certain places, especially for the 360. I believe this is not the first time you might hear this word in this conference. I believe there has been a lot of papers and even posts that has been talking about that. But mainly, 360 means that we are using or taking advantage of the 360 degree where the remote user will be able to look around independently to kind of navigate and perhaps help on the remote collaborations in a better way or also to improve in terms of the collaborative performance. However, they have certain limitations and shortcomings, even though that they have some benefits within that. For example, as we talk back again, comparing again the independent view, since you know that 360 can be easily set up with a local user stitching the camera or maybe streaming somewhere with a camera holding with him or maybe somewhere around besides him, he can easily share the camera without any complications or even having issue with setting out the configurations. <coughs> but then, because of the camera has been kind of like stitched to a place or with the local user, the remote user doesn't really have the ability or the freedom to navigate independently as they like, which can be kind of the limitations for the 360. But then this is something what 3D reconstructions or the 3D remote collaboration is good for because it provides the navigations or like a remote navigation independent movement for the remote user to walk around to be having a better contextual understanding of the spaces. But then when we talk about the 3D again, that could be also tricky for us to do because depending on the quality, depending on your internet bandwidth, or even depending on the hardware limitations, sometimes the result can be bumpy. Like, for example, the meshes can be not desirable to what you are thinking about, especially if you are trying to deal with some kind of the real-time reconstructions. This can be even harder to achieve. So this coming back to our topic again, the 360 remote collaborations giving us a much more cleaner perspective just like what you will be expecting when you are looking at the Skype or maybe like FaceTime, you can expect that's what the 2D video is good for. But then because I say it is 2D, it doesn't really give us the depth perspectives what 3D is good for. For example, if you have a task you need to estimate the size or the distance within the virtual environments, this can be somewhat challenging to achieve in the 2D itself. But then it is good for the 3D, yet if you try to think about how can we configure one of those, it can be always something difficult for us to do. So as you can see, they have their own benefits and shortcomings in terms of what they are good for and what they are bad for. And there are two main reasons why we are, or me, I'm going to choose about mixing 360 and 3D together, but no other, like for example, why the field of view 180 for the remote collaborations. Mainly because 360 and the 3D actually provides like a ready to go kind of immersive remote collaborations, meaning that anyone who received the 360 view or maybe 3D reconstructions can easily wear a VR hand-mounted display and then the remote user will be fully immersed into the environment as if they are actually at the places. And the second advantage and also the second reason why I'm picking those two but not the other techniques was, as you can see in here, when I try to align them with the advantage and limitations, you can see that something that is good for 360 is something that is like a shortcomings for the 3D and backend which means that something that, that's good for the 3D doesn't really 
do it so well in the free CC. So I thought that if we try to combine them together, that could be coming out something more interesting or maybe something that can be like a two elements that can fix perfectly. So that's actually coming to our prototype that what I'm actually proposing for today. So the main topic that I'm kind of selling in here is having the 3D remote collaboration system as a baseline. And then I try to stitch those 360 images and also 360 live video to kind of come up with a hybrid collaboration system. So let me kind of walk through with you about each of the features that I've got in the system. First, we have the remote user, which is the remote expert worker from the other places, will be receiving the static versions of the 3D reconstruction scene of the local user in, in beforehand. And then because we are using the static, so you might see that the thing is not really good and also we are using like a ready platform from HoloLens to kind of easily reconstruct the scenes to be able to give the remote user a basic rough high level understanding of the environment. On top of that, because it is 3D, it allows the remote user to walk around in the scene independently. Just that it's enough because we think that more of the other features can be done in the other parts, which is what 360 is good for. So going back to the 360 in the scene itself, you might see that we try to put those 360 like a image for the bubbles, small bubbles, in the 3D environment, in the 3D scene. So the remote user can actually navigate them by pointing at it, which is what you can see. And he can do that to be able to fly into the environments and then have a better perspective of a specific vantage point or the point of view. So in that case, the user can also quickly jump between different view to look at the things that has been done in the past or even in the real time. The third features is the actual 360 remote collaborations. So step so that means that it is a live 360 video where the local user will be streaming to the remote user in real time so they will be able to use to perform synchronous cards. And the remote user on top of that will be able to use the visual cues to help with that in terms of the non-verbal communications, combining with the verbal communications to create like a more enriched versions of the remote instructions to collaborate together. So all coming together, this is what kind of the system that we are trying to propose for today where the remote user will be able to fly in between either 360 or 3D modes to walk around and understand the spaces of the local user and then therefore giving more instructions in a better way when they build up a higher understanding of the contextual environment understanding. So we conducted an experiment to able to help us navigate and evaluate whether the system is actually good or not. And in order to do so, we try to kind of having a higher standard in what we are trying to recruit. So we have 10 AR or VR experts in both local and remote roles, that's what we recruited. And by defining the AR VR expert, we are just saying about those um, PhD students or maybe the postdocs who are having at least few days, uh, I mean, at least a high experience in VR and AR, meaning that they use at least one or twice every week in either VR and AR. And so we recruited them to do on a very simple object selection and placement task. So if you look at the images here, we have the tangram, or I would say the puzzle pieces. And on the left side, there is a spaces of the task environment where the local user room, there will be a two separate room. And in the local user room, there is a piece of bunch of the puzzles placed, placed on the table. And on the remote user side, it's kind of like an open space. So it allows the remote user to walk around in a 3D environments freely. And the main task, what they are trying to do is, if you still remember, I talk about those 360 for the bubble that I'm trying to sell as a selling point in here, those bubble will be representing as a task clue. So what the remote user needs to do is to fly into all of those bubble, and each of those bubble will be representing the stand, kind of a specific vantage point of the environments with the specific puzzle pieces being put on onto a specific place, say it's on the floor or maybe behind a chair. So he has to look at that one and then going back to 3D or maybe in the live 360 to corroborate and give the instructions to the local user saying that, oh, I found that this is a specific piece, so they have to use like no verbal and verbal communications to find the correct one and then put it back. And the, condi the conditions that we're trying to combine in here is the 360 remote collaborations against our prototype. For 360, it's just a standard 360, which means that we force them to be inside the 360 live video mode all the time. And in this case, since we don't have the photo bubble or the image bubble set has been floating around. So for that case, the remote user could only use the Vive controller or like a VR controller to click on the left, right to select the specific images and then click and hold to look at the image in immediately or instantly. So he doesn't really have an understanding of the spatial information for, the, for that cases. In terms of our measurements, we try to measure against certain things like task completion time, accuracy, preferences, and some other custom questions, for example, the motion sickness and other so, um, social presence kind of the value that we try to look at. 
for the result, in general, 360 remote collaboration is quicker than our prototype, unsurprisingly, mainly because we found that in the 360, since we are saying about 360 live remote collaborations, meaning that the remote user and the local user are kind of stitched together. So in that case, the local user thought that it would be e easier for us to un for him to understand what the remote user is saying. For example, imagine that if the remote user is kind of stitching together from the local user, or if it is placed on a specific 360 camera, when the local user tries to receive the information from the remote user, he could probably know where the remote user is talking about because they are kind of sharing the same view. So meaning that they don't have to find where he is in the 3D environments or even try to locate him before he can start understanding where he is. So for example, imagine that both of us are kind of embodied together as whole. And if, if there is a remote user says, could you look at the display in front of me, I could probably know that that is the display that I'm talking about. But if we talk about in the 3D, we might have to find which where the remote user is because if he is standing there, he might say the display right over there. Or if he's standing there, he could be saying the display in front of or besides me. So they could create a complication in terms of understanding what the remote user is saying for 360. But that is actually what I'm talking about for our prototype because even though that it has a kind of the complications in terms of understanding what the remote user is saying, but in our prototype, it gives the benefit to the remote user with the accessibility control, meaning that since it is 3D, it allows the remote user to walk around independently. Therefore, he can understand the tasks and the environment without the help or much relying on the local user to understand or ask him to go to a specific spot. Yet, when we talk about the communications in terms of like, again, giving the instructions, receiving the instructions, 360 remote collaborations is always easier because again, they are looking from the same view. So when they try to give the instructions, the local user and remote user know where they are because they are kind of like in a single, single person. So they doesn't really get confused with each other. Finally, in terms of the contextual understanding, because we have the 3D environments, meaning that our prototype does offer the much higher contextual understanding because of being able to walk around in the environments. And if one thing doesn't work, for example, if the remote user wants to look at the 360 photo bubbles, flying to there, look at the task clue, if he doesn't really understand, he can always jump out and then look at the 3D environment of it, or even jumps to another photo bubble nearby to look at the different views. So to kind of discuss for in terms of that, we found that working in the 3D environment does actually take time, especially when they try to switch between from different photo bubble. And also if we have few different task clues that they try to solve, imagine that if one of the photo bubble has been done and if they try to fly out, they might have some difficulty understanding which one has already been solved and which one is not. So this all of that are actually taking time and therefore affecting the result of the task completion time as you've seen on the previous slide. And having too many modes actually also creates some complication in terms of the higher learning curve because of how the remote user have to adapt to different view modes and also been getting used to switching between each of the modes. So this actually takes time and takes some effort to learn about that. However, going back to what 360 remote collaboration is good for, since they are all stitching together, it makes them feel socially present together and in terms of feeling more stronger together as if they are just like embodied into the local user's view. But Another interesting thing that we found was actually that in terms of the task load that we found, for 360 remote collaboration, since both of the users are kind of grouped together or embodied together, it doesn't really have to worry about, I mean, they have an equal kind of the task balance load, meaning that when the remote user wants to move to a certain place, he can give the local user the instruction says that, could you move there? And then could you look at certain places? And then finally ask them to kind of like pick the correct tasks, which means they give them more synchronous kind of a coherent and also a, sen a better sense of like being together, working as a one person. But in terms of the, our prototype, since the remote user can move anywhere he likes, look anywhere he wants, so it doesn't really need to rely on the local user to find on the particular spot. Meaning that it gives more tasks for the remote user to do while the local user pretty much just have to wait and wait until the remote user get to the task, understand where it is, finally give the instructions to the local user. So in this case, the local user thought that he might be left out most of the time in our prototype conditions. And also, last thing, manipulating the 360 images is always good in terms of offering the vantage point for the 3D because in the 3D environments, it can't be guaranteed that most of the different task environments or different vantage points might have a higher quality, meaning that if they try to jump out between that or jump in between that, they have a better view or higher quality for that, which is something I would say again best for the 360 but not for the 3D. So for the limitations, 
we try to conduct the study in the remote expert collaborations, which is not really cover everything in terms of the module for the remote collaborations because we also have a low, equal role collaborations, which we suspect that things might be a little bit more different or the result could be different if we try to compare uh, or try to investigate between the remote expert collaborations against the equal role collaborations. Apart from that, we also have a small and open central room as I was set up, meaning that we don't have any objects in the middle, meaning that if we try to imagine using the 360 remote collaborations again, the, re the user can pretty much see everywhere or every corner of the room without any issues. But imagine that if we put like a box in the center of the room, that could cause some difficulty definitely for the 3D, I mean the 360 remote collaborations to 360 video to look at the, every corner of the room. Meaning that that could somehow affecting the 3D result and against the 360 result for how we are trying to look for. And also some other limitations, for example, the task capability because we are using the static 3D reconstructions, meaning that it kind of limits what kind of the things we can observe. For example, if we try to involve the task moving the objects on the room, it could be something that we can't really achieve in a steady reconstruction 3D. And other hardware limitations such as the limited field of view and some other reconstruction quality that we are using for the current hardware technologies, maybe say in the short futures when HoloLens 2 coming out, that could be something can help directly impacting our system, but that could be something that we want to look for in our future works. So to kind of wrap our prototype or the talk that I'm saying today, we created one of the, another approach that shows how we can combine 360 and 3D together for the remote collaborations, mainly by having the 3D and also representing the 360 images in the photo bubble view and also allows the remote user to be able to switch to the 360 live at any time as they wish. And this is a new technique, as I would say, and unsurprisingly to one of my prior work, it provides a different authority and also different variations in terms of working on the tasks. So say for example, if certain thing doesn't work in the 3D environment, the remote user can easily switch to different view mode to work on the task again. So it doesn't restrict them on how much they can do, but it's more about left by their imaginations on how can they can do the task. And it's all about the flexibilities. And last but not least, this is also one of our first in initial evaluations for this kind of the different concept that we are trying. So hopefully we try to get something out of this in order to help us improve for our next future works. For example, having a better system to help with coping out in a better user study setup. So that's all for what I'll be talking today and thanks for listening with me. I'll be starting and taking any questions. So it is a manual operation, so all of those pre-system bubbles are taken beforehand. And also another thing which I did mention in the talk was the system also supports the capturing the photo in the real time, meaning that the, re the remote user could actually click on the button to trigger like a capture for the shot to create a bubble in the real time for them to visit. But more of the concept is more about like introducing what I would call like a time traveling concept, where the remote user can fly into different uh, period of the time of a specific perspective of vantage point. So, so these could also be temporally disconnected. Yes. Uh, were you looking into any way to represent that to the user, or was it just, um, I, I think your interaction was just like the zoom and like the bubble. Yes. Like to expand on you. That's right. Is, is there anything for temporality? Um, not at the moment, but that will be something that we might want to look at for in the future. Okay. And also maybe say it's manipulating multiple when the photo bubbles start to floating out, like in a, for the certain amount of the capacity may probably want to kind of group them together. And uh, so, uh, I think you mentioned like uh, having the different reconstructions like increases context in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any metrics for measuring like uh, a user's perception of context in the past? Um, I wasn't really get what you mean. Could you try to explain again? Sir? Uh, so, so, you express that users would have some more contextual understanding. Yeah. Because they had multiple reconstructions. Right? Multiple view modes, yes. Uh, was, there, was there any metrics in your past that uh, used to measure like, a user's perception of content? 
Yes, so in terms of that, we done in a two different ways. First, we have a post interview and also we observe about what the participants do. Because we kind of told the participants that when they fly into different photo bubble or in different build modes, their virtual locations will be updated to the local user in real time. But initially, before, like in the first few tasks, I, we observed that most of the participants are like, kind of say, when they fly into that corner, instead of saying that, could you come into where I am? They are instead saying that could you come into the say the corner right in front of you to pick out the something they try to describe as precise as they could but on the later of stage of the study which they kind of realized that they can actually make use of the spatial informations then they start getting make use of that and they they will be like saying that could you kind of like look at in front of me and they will be expecting the local user to understand where they are looking at and also we have a questionnaire that talks about how well the participants feel that they are and be able to understand the locations of the task clue and also where they are virtually and physically in the environment through the question that which they um, which is one of the results which we didn't report but which I can also tell you that they have the highest score for our prototype. I think that's one question. Yeah. Um, one thing I I to get so both users always see where the other one is. They have a representation of the group. Okay. Yes. Did you, uh, any user reported uh, some sort of um, discomfort or awkwardness in being so close to the other remote user? Like, because they kind of don't have a, they need to be sharing viewpoints and I've seen from the videos you have uh, your hand here and you have the other user's hand on top. Do you think would be worth exploring uh, user sense of personal space and how that affects the usability of the system? That is actually an interesting topic, I would say. But so far from what I observe and evaluated until now, I found that I haven't really got any feedback from the participants saying that they feel awkward or weird having a different experience apart from they found that having a different view mode, especially in the 360 when the camera is slightly above that, they say that the only mentions that they feel that is with in a different height, which they are not normally used to. But apart from that, they also found that it's quite interesting to be able to uh, virtually embody it into the another person's view. Okay. So in that, in that same line, uh, mm -hmm. anyone reported on cyber sick from being following someone else's perspective? Yes, they actually did say that in the 360 remote collaboration conditions, but for our prototype, they say that as long as soon as they feel sick, they could always jump out to the 3D. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.